So here is how we actually drew this thing out. Right here, this is the first one that I did. And what this is, I tried to make everything meet in the middle, but it doesn't actually work that way. The only measurements you really need are this measurement here, that measurement there, this one here, and this one here. If you see right here, I drew my center lines. Everything meets up along these axes right here. So to space everything out, all you have to do from each thing is to just subtract from each side, essentially, from right here and right here is a 30 second on each side. That gives you your basically your 0.06 that you're needed for the spacing on that. Just do that all the way around. Over here, I tried to meet things up in the middle, but they're not supposed to meet in the middle. They're just supposed to go parallel like this and that so you get everything. I haven't darkened it up yet. Once I darken it up, we'll be able to see it a little bit better and how it's really supposed to look. Remember when the, cutting these out to stay on the right side of the lines because they are very thin and you don't want to break off too much of them when doing this. Just go slow with it and you should be all right. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. That way I don't break anything. All right, so what we're doing here is we're just slowly etching these lines. Just be careful when you do it because we want to go deep enough to where it pokes holes into the plastic. So this is all I'm doing. I just take my ruler, I lightly go across, I etch a line, then I go deeper and deeper each time. So you see off to the right side, I've already got a bunch already cut out. So we're just showing you how I do this. And the way I turn that upside down like that is because sometimes I find it easier for me. I can do one side the way I'm looking at it visually and then do the other side and then just flip it back and forth. Um, I like to go from one end and then the other since I'm right handed. So by flipping it, I can constantly stay pulling the side that I feel comfortable with. And that's why you see me constantly turning it like that. So the blade, I can put the blade exactly on the spot I need to cut pulling on each side and then turning it around. So let's look at what we have here. This is the entire thing cut out with the holes and the slots with the exception of the actual octagon port. So we're just going to go around all this and we're going to slowly cut it out just like we've done like with our skins. You know, you put a line in there, you just slowly pull until that plastic just breaks free. So you see I have most of the sides cut out there and now we're going to cut out the rest of the sides. So this one, it's being a little stubborn, finally broke off there. Here, I like to go all the way up and down the whole piece. That way it just breaks off in nice squares and it only leaves small little triangular corners that are left. So you see, I just keep working it. And be careful, you don't want to break too hard because sometimes you see those pieces, they pop at, in a little bit where the slots are. So we broke off that side piece. Now we've got a triangle piece that we're doing here. Now I just keep doing it. If you mess up, you mess up. Just call it weathering. Nobody will notice. I've had a few instances where I'm cutting stuff and my blade goes off the track a little bit and I slice into my piece. It happens. Just deal with it or find a way to patch it up or call it weathering. So this is almost done. I've got one more left after we break this piece off right here. It's also a good idea to keep changing blades. And sometimes if you feel like it doesn't want to break through one side, flip it over like you saw me do and just go along the other side. And look at that. It broke right free. So here we are. This is the last one right here. Slowly going through this. This one is almost broken off a little bit more. And here we go. So there we have one octagon port done. Now we need to make its casing. So we need to do a little bit of math with this. Um, it Remember it's rounded up on the tops. So you need to figure out when you build this, where you want each side to be, whether you want the top and the bottom to be on the top and bottom, or if you want the sides to press in on them. So that will determine how long you actually make this entire piece. Remember the curved section, that's the same curvature as the actual droid, maybe a little bit smaller. So you just have to figure that out when you're doing this. And that's all I'm doing here. I'm just, I drew it out already. And now I'm just slowly making my lines. I did get the one curvature just by putting a spare piece of uh, curved wood that I had that I'd already made for the body. And I just drew that outline on there. So the rest of it was pretty simple to do. Um, remember because this piece is curved, when you make the top portion of this, it's going to be a little bit different. So you need to make sure each length is proper. So here we've got that piece broken out. We're going to have to make two of these. So keep that in mind. 
almost have one part broken completely apart and there you go you see me mess up just a little bit but it happens you find a way around it you work from the opposite end and that way it doesn't dig into that scratch again so here we go that piece is now complete right there we are working on some of the end pieces those take a little bit of time so there are there are a bunch of different ways that you can do this I think I made like five or six pieces maybe and then you just kind of piece them all together you make big squares and then little squares and then you put the squares into those squares and it just it comes out fairly good so as I was saying because it's curved you're going to have some pieces where the top part on a side is higher than another part of the side so you just have to make it at an angle so if you are having trouble with making any of this you know you can always go on the forums and ask somebody because I guarantee you somebody will know so what you see is exactly what I am doing here this is one of the pieces that has one side longer than the other and I just showed you that so here we're making a long side as well uh, we're just going to go along the boards keep cutting out on our styrene making two pieces here now uh, this wasn't a complex piece to do but it was making this whole octagon port out of styrene certainly not the easiest in the world uh, there may be better alternatives but for someone who can say they wanted to do it by themselves this is definitely the best way to go styrene is easy to work with all you need is a ruler and a utility knife which i have there so you can see here the edges of that are actually beveled in uh, the reason for being is because when we need to meet this up with the other piece of styrene we're basically making a box which i'm doing here so the block of wood that i have that's just to basically rest stuff up against um using the uh octagon port itself as a guide so the octagon port the way i designed mine will sit inside of these so i am making all the pieces be able to fit inside of that if you want to make it on the back side you know you you have to adjust all your measurements and things like that so take that into consideration when you're building yours so this is how i did mine you can do yours whatever way you want to do it so like for an example if you wanted to make it to where yours rests on the outside of a box you would maybe need to make some tabs or something like that on the outside or just make your end pieces longer and then rest a box on top of that so here i am i'm basically making my box going on the outside of everything so I'm using one thing as a guide and I'm just meeting up two end pieces taking into account measurements for each one and how big they have to be so this goes inside remember I beveled some of the edges and I'm showing you that here so I'm basically going to put some glue a little bit of glue on this not too much super glue because I don't want this running down and getting stuck on the hard octagon port piece with all the slots that I made so you see that fits in there um, it's also a good idea to mark which pieces go where so like which octagon port will match up with which box that you're making and mark which side each thing goes on to because it is kind of specific so here i am strengthening up the sides of this on where the joints meet up this here i'm just cutting off the edges of the box that i made that way when i go to put this octagon port together it'll go together easier this knife, I just press it down and it breaks right through. This is a 0 .040 styrene, so cutting it is not a problem. Here we go, one more corner left, and we now have a nice little box that we made for our octagon port. Strengthening up the sides, I'm using some regular plastic cement here. So what we're doing now, I'm going to measure this for the outside frame, and I'm doing this method basically putting that was a piece of tape there that I rested the uh, octagon frame on and I'm just moving it that way I can get a base of how this needs to actually sit because some sides are longer and it actually is rounded when it fits down on there so I'm using the ruler and this is strictly to darken all my lines so I can see them better when I go to cut this out and we're going to cut this out the same way we did everything else the same way we've done our skins just make your cuts here we go right here going along the outside of this which will be the flat portion which sits on the outside of R2 and you will see this once it's finally completed. A close up right here you see just I free handed a lot of stuff. I went slow with it. I wasn't worried about how it looked. I can always sand stuff down. It is styrene 
and it'll fit nicely as well it gives it a different kind of feel to the droid like a weathered look and one that's been used because it won't look uniform like a brand new droid would it would look like it's been in some battles so here we go just going across here we're doing the inside right there everything's now cut out didn't feel like showing you all that taking my super glue just going around the edges you do have time to work with it it doesn't evaporate that fast you just have to be careful when you're placing it down because you only get one shot to align this right the first time which is what i'm doing here just pressing it down kind of holding it in certain corners sometimes you may want to work with the flat parts and then slowly working your way around it if you want so you see i have a little lip there not a big deal that can always be sanded down here we're using some plastic cement going around the edges so just let that dry that'll complete the box our next episode coming up will be the little circle discs go inside so you want to be sure to catch that subscribe so you get those videos uh comments and likes are appreciated we'll see you on the next one we'll have that out in about two weeks